Guys, welcome back to the channel. First of all, my apologies for being away for such a long period of time, but I have been working on other projects. But today's video was very, very important for me to make because WordPress 6.4 is officially out. And this is a major, major update because we do have a brand new WordPress theme, the WordPress 2024 theme, as well as a host of new changes and improvements to the Gutenberg blog editor. So coming up in this video, I'm going to walk you through what the 2024 theme is all about. And I'm also going to talk about a few of the improvements that have been made to the Gutenberg editor. I cannot talk about every single change because that will take way too long. So. Let's first of all start off with the WordPress uh, 2024 theme. Now, when you install and you activate the theme, this is going to be kind of like the default homepage that you get. Now, the theme is very, very lightweight. It's made more for like blogs and for writing. It's not really the best kind of theme for e-commerce sites or business websites, but of course it's WordPress. There are other themes for those kinds of websites. Now, the interesting, interesting thing about this particular theme is that it comes with a whole bunch of patterns that are pre-built design templates that you can simply use. So if I was to go to the design, come down here to patterns, you can see all the patterns that have been provided with the 2024 theme. So we have patterns for like banners, call to action, featured services, posts, portfolio, and so on. Now, if for example, I wanted to make use of one of the about templates right here, you can see that they are actually locked, which means that you cannot edit the default uh, templates that you see. However, one thing you could do is you could click on the three buttons just below the pattern, and then you can duplicate that pattern, all right? And then when you duplicate the pattern, you can then come in here right now and then simply edit the pattern and change whatever it is that you wanted to change. So, so for, for example, let me just add some extra text in here just to make it different, okay? I'm gonna go ahead now and then simply save this particular pattern. Now note that it's called project description. So if I was to go right now and I wanted to create a brand new page, all right? I'm going to go ahead right now and then add the pattern. So I'm going to come up here to blocks, go to patterns. And then if I was to go to my patterns right here, you can see we have project description. I can click in there and then right there, I have the pattern ready to go. And of course I can make any further changes that I wanted to make to the content of that particular page. So going back to the patterns, there's a wide variety of them. Again, you've got patterns for like your gallery, for your futas, services, team, and you can use these patterns to very, very quickly build out whatever kind of page that they're trying to build. All right, so now let's move on to some of the changes that have been made to the Gutenberg editor. And I'm gonna start off with the images, okay? Right here, I do have a sample page that I've titled WordPress 6.4. I have added a gallery right here. Now the thing is, when you click on any one of the images in your gallery or even maybe like a standalone image, you will now see that we have this option right here to expand on click. So if you select that option, let me show you what it's gonna look like, okay? When a user now clicks on the image, the image now expands kind of like in a light box kind of format. And this is a pretty cool option. In fact, I have the 6.3 version opened right here. And you can see whenever you click on an image, with 6.3, you don't have that option in here to expand uh, the image when it is clicked on. So this is a really nice improvement with 6.4. Also, when it comes to dealing with the gallery images, if you now take a look at the list view, it's now showcased in a much better way than it was in 6.3. In 6.3, you never really had the images showing right by the image. But for me right now, you can see we've got the image, been shown. And of course, we can also simply rearrange the images very, very easily from the list view. Now, coming down here, we've also had an improvement to the group block. We can now add either like a uh, background color or maybe even a background image. So in here, for example, right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on the block right here. You will notice that on the styling for the row, Okay, on the styling, we have the option right now to either add like a background color 
or even a background image. So you can click on background color right here and then I can choose black or red or orange. And you can see we do have the option right there. But with 6.3, we never had that option. We were not able to add any kind of background color to the uh, group element. So that's a massive improvement as well. So if you want to start adding like background colors or background images to your group blocks, your rows, you can now do so with 6.4. But then moving further down in here, I want to show you something very interesting. See right here, we can now add vertical text. You can see I've got the image and in vertical format, I've got mystery been written. So how exactly am I able to do this? Well, if you go to the header or the text block, right? And then you go over to typography, you wanna click on the three buttons in here. You want to activate the option of text orientation. So when you activate that option, you will now see the orientation options in here. You have horizontal, which is of course the default, but now you also have the vertical option in here as well. I know this isn't necessarily like the very best example to showcase this but you can create some really stylish kinds of content with this new addition to the Kundabug editor. Another major improvement with 6.4 is that you now have the ability to effectively change the aspect ratio of the featured images of your blog posts. So as an example, if I wanted to edit the archives template right now by default of course I'm displaying six or rather nine of my uh, blog posts with the featured image in them, I can change the size of the featured image very, very effectively. I can simply click on the image right here and then go to style. And then down here, you can see we now have aspect ratio. So the default is three to four, but I can go with like original as an example, which will change the size. I can go with three by two. I can go with two by three. Or I can even go with nine by 16. It all depends on how you want to display the featured images on your template. So this is a very, very nice addition. You now have more options with which you can display the featured images for your blog posts. One last feature I wanted to show you before I round up is that you now have a much more effective way of being able to save your patterns and even categorize them. Now with 6.3, you could only save your pattern and then reuse it. We didn't have the ability to actually categorize the patterns, but now take a look at this, okay? If I like this pattern writer that I've created, this text, this block text right here, and I wanted to save it as a pattern, I can go to the option in here and then simply click on create pattern. Okay. And then I can call this, let's just call this one, uh, the mystery pattern, right? And then I can add it to a category. I can actually categorize my patterns right now. So what I'm going to do right now is let's go all the way down here to text and categorize it on that text. I'm going to go ahead now and then create. Okay. And now let's imagine that this was a brand new page. I wanted to use this particular pattern again. I can simply come in here right now, go to browse all, go to patterns, and then I can come down here to text. And then on the text, you can now see I have the mystery pattern that I've just created and I can simply use that over and over again. Now there's still a host of other improvements as well, such as improvements to the navigation bar, other kinds of blocks as well. You can now work with block hooks if you wanted to. And of course, performance and accessibility have been improved. Now on a slight negative note, we were expecting the font library to be included in 6.4, unfortunately, it didn't make it. It's going to be included hopefully now in 6.5, but that's about the only major negative I have with this new version of WordPress. Overall, a massive improvement over 6.3, and I'd love to hear what you think about these new changes with WordPress. If you're interested in me making a more in-depth tutorial on how to work with WordPress 6.4 and specifically the WordPress 2024 theme. Be sure to let me know. If you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, share the video with anyone whom you feel might be interested in it. If this is your first time here on the channel, my name is Alex. I talk about WordPress and web development stuff in general. If you enjoy content like this, please do subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.